And that brings us to 745, 24 degrees at KNEB. Time for today's News Extra program brought to you by First State Bank. Here's Kevin Mooney. Thank you, Dennis. Good morning, everyone. Billy Estes is here for the Midwest Theater. We have a lot to talk about regarding the theater. Uh, Billy hasn't been here for over a month. I know, it's strange. It's Maybe. good to be back after the first of the year, yeah. getting back into the swing of things. Yeah, I don't think you've been here since uh, early December, maybe. But anyway, um, let's discuss uh, all the things that are going on. First, Friends of the Midwest Theater Annual Meeting. That's tomorrow night. And tomorrow night, so we just want to invite the, our patrons, donors, and the community members to come out and uh, join us for our annual meeting and kind of get an update about what's happened at the theater in the last year. Seems like there's been a lot of events through our doors and patrons to see us, uh, as well as an update on our Embrace the Digital Evolution project that we announced about a year ago this time at our annual meeting last year and kind of where that project is standing and the explorations that that project has taken in the last year has taken us to a lot of different places. I've learned a lot about acoustic needs and historic spaces to say the least and it's sometimes a little bit uh, bamfoozling to, to say the least. Yeah, to say uh, uh, that's true and, and uh you guys have had to deal with uh, different people wanting to do different things in order to getting this digital up, and and some of it was, some of it was kind of scary what some people wanted to do, right? Yeah, I mean, we've had people that, or I should say, one of our vendors that we've been looking at using, or looked at using, you know, wanted us to put, you know, cover our walls up, floor to ceiling, and you know, that's not what the Midwest has been about for. I mean, I guess in the root of the purpose of us saving the building was partially, you know, saving the murals and the, the aesthetic side of the theater, not only the side of the community that it supports, but the aesthetic side of it. So we've uh, done a lot of research, uh, thanks to the committee that served for us, has done that, and uh, I think we're really close to kind of finalizing our construction, I guess, or our install schedule for later this spring. We're looking at late March, early April right now. Uh, we were set to go in February, but we've had to kind of move it back until we can kind of get all the contractors right in line together so we'll have a, an update on that tomorrow night all right and uh, that's good so how, how close are we to raising all the money for this we're really close right now uh, we're, our project total goal is like 170,000 is where we're sitting at and as of the end of the year we were sitting around 168 that had been raised so uh, just uh, I guess a heartfelt thank you to the community and our donors and it's a uh, but the theater is very blessed with people who care about it, and thank you for supporting it because it uh, makes all of our jobs there easier for to get things done. Wow, does that include the twenty five, the, say the twenty thousand dollars of their about their yeah. amounts you'll probably get from Rotary that, Gold? That's, that's earmarked from Rotary Gold. So um, it's pretty incredible to see that that's kind of just happened, and it happened very, I guess, organically. You know, it's just yeah. uh, we've had some businesses that stepped up with some nice five thousand dollar donations and. Uh, many 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 individuals when we did our campaign uh, in October to our membership database that just it was, it was very great so yeah. Willow will touch base on those I think tomorrow night as well the donors okay I don't Good know deal. the list from memory there's too many yeah. of them but all of but you it, thank but it you, does thank sound you like you're, you're basically done yeah I think we're I think we're basically done with our fundraising there's going to be some minor adjustments to the budget as our schedule and final uh, um, selection and materials takes place. All right. When you do the construction, you know, this is speakers and speakers and then we have to install acoustical paneling in the ba on the first floor and the back wall of the balcony uh, along the first floor of the main floor to address uh, excess sound energy uh, that the surround sound will introduce into the space uh, and we've been uh, working with some vendors to come up with creative ways to uh, cover the walls uh, and not cover our murals but get the uh, desired effect and reduction of sound energy. Um, so I think we're I think we're really 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 close. <laughs> All right, very good. All right, let's talk about some of the other things going on. Uh, community c uh, cinema Thursday night. It's Thursday night. Uh, Soul Food Junkies just watched it last night with my kids. It was a great little film. Um, I think that the, the film addresses uh, junk food or processed food or soul food or overly cooked food uh, in primarily in the black and uh, uh, African American communities. And I really think that the film can really speak to us as, you know, Western Nebraskans that, you know, we, we eat a lot of uh, Mexican food and German food and Russian food that's carb laden and maybe isn't as fresh as it can be. And the film addresses, you know, the way to eat uh, culturally as you have grown up or grown up to, but how to do it somewhat in a healthier way. Uh, and we will have on hand uh, Thursday night uh, 
Beth and Nathan Everett from Metal Art Hearth CSA, as well as Dan Witzel from the Mitchell Valley CSA to kind of talk about uh, opportunities to get fresh food here in our community, in our valley. I will say I'm a member of uh, Metal Arc, and uh, I was eating fresh spinach out of the field in December because it's been a mild winter, and it was pretty incredible to think that we have places here in western Nebraska that you can eat fresh, locally grown food in the middle of the winter. It's uh, pretty great. Yeah. So they'll be on hand to talk about that. Uh, uh, I'm going to be moderating the discussion this week, or this month. Uh, Colin will be out of, out of town. So come down and see us Thursday evening for Community Cinema, 7.30. Uh, and yeah, maybe we'll it's absolutely free. It's free. So get on down there. All right, we're going to talk about a couple of other things. Uh, that uh, First of all, it's uh, Barefoot real quick, February 14th. We have Barefoot coming on Valentine's Day. So yeah. we still have plenty of tickets. Uh, Tickets on the main floor are starting to be selective, you could say the least, um, but we're going to be offering our champagne and chocolate that we usually offer during movies, but we'll be offering that on Valentine's nights. It's a Thursday evening, guys, or gals, you need to get those plans made for those sweethearts and pre-purchase those uh, as well or get them the night of the show. Um, tickets for Barefoot, um, they are a Telluride Bluegrass Festival uh, winning competition band from a few years ago. Uh, great Americana Bluegrass, so if you guys have enjoyed... Uh, the Hydes or Cole Cannon or Brad Colrick. Uh, over the last, I don't know, six or seven years, uh, they kind of fit in that same vein, you know, so come out and listen to them. And uh, sure to be a special Valentine's evening. Tickets on the main floor are $15 for members, $18 for non-members. Balcony general admission are 16 or family packs in the balcony are 40 bucks, which are two adults and two kids. All right, so get your tickets for Barefoot. If you've got season tickets for the whole series, then you really don't have to worry about it. You don't it. have to worry about you it. You don't have to worry about it. Okay. But you still need to get that champagne taken care of. You <laughs> need to get that out of the way. You know. So, so I can. So what I do is uh, I just tell you I, I need champagne. Uh -huh. and we'll, when you come in, we'll have a bucket with your name on it and two glasses, and you can oh. just take it right with you to your seat. So if you want to do that as a surprise to your sweetheart, you can even get online and pop online and purchase them, and nobody will ever know. You'll just see a nice little charge on your credit card from the Midwest, and your sweetheart will be like, well, what are we doing at the theater? Yeah, she won't yeah. know that you've bought her sh champagne and chocolate for the evening. So. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Jim Brickman is coming, and for a lot of people, this is... Now, I don't know a lot about Jim Brickman. I'm learning something about him today. Dave says, you don't know about Jim Brickman? So Jim Brickman's coming so here's to the, the theater. announcement. It's out of the bag before we know it's happened. Yeah. yeah. So we have Jim Brickman coming uh, in April. Uh, we're excited, or I'm excited. It's been a kind of a lengthy contract process for us, but uh, he'll be at the theater the, on Sunday, April 7th, the Sunday after Easter. And uh, we're excited about finally being able to get a date with him. And uh, he is a Grammy-nominated artist. It has uh, a little over 30 albums to his name and has worked with uh, Michael W. Smith, Martina McBride, Danny Osborne, Olivia Newton-John, and I'm sure the list goes on and on and on and on and on. So. We are excited to have an evening of romance with Jim Brickman is the title of the show. And uh, tickets will go on sale for our members uh, on January 29th, and they're going to have a two-week pre-sale window. And then general public tickets are, uh, will go on sale on uh, February 12th. So you can get those for Valentine's Day, too. Yeah. Yes. All right. So he does, uh, like, piano and, and uh, some pop sing. style instrumentals, some singing, and Some right? singing, yep. He will, he, this will be a solo show. He is known for kind of a star-studded tour that he does occasionally, but this is a solo one-off show that he will be doing out for us. So he's doing a little bit of a historic theater run, so they were looking for venues for him to play in their historic theaters, and I think the Midwest fits that bill. Yeah, Grammy nomination in 2003. He's got Canadian Country Music Awards, Dove Awards by the Gospel Music Association, so a lot of, a lot of awards. Yes, so if you uh, know adult contemporary piano music or have heard, uh, I would say he's probably most familiar uh, in his Christmas music, is, uh, seems to be where a lot of people know him from. So uh, get ready to buy those tickets. All right, very good. Will do. All right, I think we covered her, bud. I think so. We got a lot of other things coming up to the theater, too, though. So don't forget about, you know, uh, this is Oscar uh, nominated film season. We have Hitchcock, Life of Pi here in the next couple of weeks. Lincoln's coming. Les Mis will be here eventually. Argo will be here eventually. Um, so keep on calling or checking out our website for what's going on, midwesttheater.com. You can buy tickets there, or you can give us a ring, 632-4311, or you can stop in and we'll have with you any day. All right, good deal. Thanks, Thanks for coming in.